Here are the notes on single displacement and replacement reactions. So in a single displacement reaction, one element reacts with a compound to replace an, an element in a compound. So for example, A plus BC yields B plus AC. A is going to equal a metal. Or we can have a single displacement reaction happen with a halogen. And I'll take you through examples for both here in just a second. So this PowerPoint follows exactly along with your blue sheet. I've just put it into a PowerPoint form so that you can see the example equations a little bit larger. So I'm going to write out example equations just like I did with the decomposition notes. Um, so go ahead and make sure that you have a pencil out and you can write these notes and these reactions on the blue sheet or on a separate sheet of paper, your prerogative. So most of the time, these reactions are also going to take place in an aqueous solution. Uh, for example, step seven of our evidence of chemical change lab, we had aluminum plus copper chloride, pardon, copper two chloride, yields copper plus aluminum chloride. So that copper chloride, copper two chloride, was in an aqueous solution. So that was an example of a single displacement reaction that you saw last week. So we must use the activity series for a single displacement reaction. You've got this on the side of your blue sheet. So we have an activity series for metals, and then we also have an activity series for nonmetals for halogens. And so we're going to reference this a lot. This is never something you need to memorize. It is something you need to know how to use. So for the first um, step of single displacement reactions, so the first example, so each element in the reaction, so each element in the list will displace from a compound any of the elements below it. The larger the interval of the elements, the more serious the reaction. So, for example, like lithium and copper would be a really um, strong reaction. It would happen very fast because it is very far away from each other on the activity series. So, aluminum and copper, for example. So one of the things that you noticed in the evidence of chemical change lab was that test tube got really hot, and it's because there's a really large space in between aluminum and copper, so it was a very vigorous reaction here, um, and that's why it was very exothermic and there was so much heat being released. And so that reaction worked because aluminum was above copper on the activity series. So here's another example, aluminum and lead nitrate. So we're gonna check here is aluminum above lead on the activity series. So you're always going to check your activity series first before you finish these reactions. And so because aluminum is above lead, we know that this reaction would happen. Um, and so then we can finish our equation here, and then we also have it balanced. So if you notice, the aluminum is kicking off the lead in the compound, and we're creating lead and aluminum nitrate. And of course, I have it balanced already, but that would be what you would need to do as you go. So here's another example, or pardon, actually here's just another informational piece. Always read the information in the boxes over here as well. It will give you a lot of answers to what you're doing, so don't forget the fine print over here. So the second thing is all metals above hydrogen will displace hydrogen from non-oxidizing acids such as HCl and H2SO4. And so if we look here we've got magnesium and hydrochloric acid and we're kind of looking at this box right here. So these react with acids and they replace hydrogen um, in non-oxidizing acids. So again, it's kind of telling you the answer over here in this box. So then it will create magnesium and hydrogen gas because it's telling me that magnesium reacts with acids and it replaces the hydrogen. So anything in this box will react with acids replacing the hydrogen. It will also react with steam water and we'll get to that example in just a second. So we're showing here magnesium kicking off the hydrogen, creating hydrogen gas, so it's reacting and d replacing the hydrogen. Another example with hydro or sulfuric acid, aluminum kicking off the hydrogen and sulfuric acid, creating aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas. So there's your examples there. The next one is metals near the top of the series from lithium to lanthium, so from lithium to lanthium, will re replace half the hydrogens from water to form a metallic hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And so here what we're going to do is we're actually going to write water a weird way. We're going to write it HOH because we're going to do that to show like if I have an H here, that's half of the hydrogens in water, so it's hydrogen hydroxide really. Um, and we're going to be able to show identifying that half the hydrogens in water again equals one hydrogen and it will leave us with a hydroxide group and that will help us get our products forming a metallic hydroxide. So for example, okay, <clears throat> if we're looking at the 
box up here, it's the most active and these react with cold water and there you have HOH written like that replacing the first hydrogen in, in acids and it replaces it with oxygen um, and it replaces it to form an oxide with oxygen and so we've got lithium plus water here even though it's written HOH it's still water and that arrow is just showing that lithium going to that first hydrogen kicking it off to create hydrogen gas and then our metallic hydroxide another example here sodium with water creating sodium hydroxide so sodium kicking off that hydrogen creating hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide again if you read the box right here it pretty much tells you what you're doing so don't forget the fine print it's really important so metals from magnesium to iron will displace all the hydrogen from steam to form hydrogen uh, hydrogen gas and an oxide so the steam is really important so if you see that in a question um, the reason why we have that steam in there is so that you know that the reaction will actually happen and so these react with steam uh, not cold water to and acids and it replaces the hydrogen so it replaces all the hydrogens so we don't necessarily need to write HOH we can just write H2O so it's showing that that magnesium is kicking off all the hydrogens and it's creating an oxide and hydrogen gas rather than a hydroxide which was the previous example metals less active than iron do not appreciate do not react with water and that's kind of nice because uh, if you look down here a lot of that is our metals that we use for jewelry so we don't really want that reacting with water and in general these three are the <clears throat> fairly unreactive but essentially anything lower than iron do not really react with water so make sure you're reading that and there's the answer right here in this box so again the fine print within the activity series is going to be important so no reaction example here if I've got lithium hydroxide and zinc because zinc is below lithium on the activity series it would not react and so we would just say no reaction um, and that's how you do that so always when you're doing these examples what I recommend is that you make sure that you look at your activity series first before you start writing to make sure that the reaction actually happens so halogen activity series the rules are the same we're simply using the halogen activity series which is down there towards the bottom and these are our nonmetals. remember these are also our cliff bronze so that will help make sure that you're writing those as diatomic molecules um, so our example here is chlorine plus potassium bromide and we're going to look at the activity series of halogens and we're going to look and say chlorine is above bromine so that this reaction would work and so we're going to kick off the chlorine or we're going to kick off the bromine so it's really important when you're dealing with the halogens that they knock off the other halogen you cannot have a chlorine bromine compound because those are both negative so just make sure that you're paying attention to what you're dealing with there um, and you're creating the correct compound so we would create potassium chloride and then bromine gas and then again like I was saying don't forget to write that as a diatomic molecule so your assignment as you go here is just to do the single displacement we're not going to do combustion reactions um, until later so just single displacement problems so 20 through 32 and the analysis questions please those need to be done for Tuesday okay thank you so much